Hey, Dan from Zen Healthcare IT here. In today's video, we're going to be doing a quick overview of configuration maps, walk through how to set up a configuration map variable and how to retrieve it within channels. The configuration map functions similar to other maps you may have worked with in Mirth Connect, but with some slight differences. The major difference in the way configuration maps work is in how the data is stored. All other maps are stored in memory while the configuration maps contents are stored in a properties file in the Mirth Connect installation. This will be important to note in the event that you have to do some maintenance on the Mirth installation itself. The purpose of the configuration map is to store relatively static key value pairs that can be used in multiple places of your Mirth Connect instance. Configuration maps can speed up channel maintenance and make Mirth Connect server deployments much easier. Before we dive into setting up a configuration map, let's do a quick overview of some important things to note. Configuration map variables can only be set within the configuration map settings tab. Attempting to set a configuration map variable within a channel will result in a thrown exception, explaining that it's setting the variable in an unsupported action. The configuration map can be referenced like other variable map types like global maps, response maps, channel maps, source maps, etc. A full list of the variable maps can be found in the Mirth Connect user guide, which we'll put a link to in the description below. Or you can reach out to the Zen team on which variable map type best fits your workflow. By default, the configuration map is stored as a flat file on the Mirth Connect server to facilitate easier migrations. Alternatively, the configuration map can be stored in the local Mirth Connect database for advanced use cases like a clustered Mirth Connect environment. Let's go ahead and dive into how to set up a configuration map variable and how to retrieve it within channels. In the dashboard, we have three interfaces that we will interact with. The first two interfaces, interface A and interface B, share a common string that can be updated to be maintained in one location. Looking at interface A, we can see that we're trying to make an HTTP request out to a third party using a specific URL value. Hopping over to interface B, we can see the same string value used for the URL. In this simple example, using two interfaces, it would be easy enough to go into both interfaces and update the URL value manually if the URL needed to be changed. But this becomes more difficult to maintain as your list of interfaces grows. We'll head over to Settings and then the Configuration Map tab. Right now, we don't currently have configuration map variables, so let's go ahead and create one to reference in interface A and interface B. We'll click the Add button to make the new entry, set the key to a meaningful variable name, set the value to a specific string, the URL in interface A and interface B, and although not required, a comment as to what the new variable is for. Once we're happy with the new entry, we'll go ahead and click Save. As we can see, configuration map variables are set to be hidden in the Mirth Connect administrator. Checking the Show Values checkbox will let us confirm the value we just set, and seeing as it matches what is in interface A and interface B, let's go ahead and update those interfaces to use our new configuration map variable. Heading back into interface A, we can now update the URL with the newly created configuration map variable with velocity template syntax, which is using velocity template script to reference our configuration map variable. Once we get that set up, we can click Save. We'll go ahead and print out the configuration map variable before the request is made in order to see the final value that will be used to make the final request. We'll perform the same steps in interface B that we performed in interface A. First, we will update the URL with the configuration map variable with velocity template syntax for interface B. And then we'll print out the configuration map variable And now to confirm our changes, we will deploy the instances and start sending across some test messages. We'll start with sending a message to interface A. And in the server log, we can see that the configuration map variable is being printed out and in the message browser. The interface successfully calls out to that value. Repeating the same with interface B, we can see that the same value is being printed out to the server log from both interface A and interface B. 
Now that the interface A and interface B are referencing the same configuration map variable, our system administrators have let us know that we must update where our request is going to. So let's head back to the configuration map tab under the settings and go ahead and update the configuration map variable that we just created. We can just double click the variable entry that we want to modify and then click save once we're happy with the changes. One more time, we'll go ahead and send a message to interface A and interface B, observing the server log and what each interface prints out. We can now see that our configuration map variable has been used by both interfaces without the need of redeploying either interface. With both interfaces now referencing the configuration map variable, as well as any new interfaces, there will be no added overhead on the amount of interfaces that reference that configuration map variable. One important thing to mention is that, as previously noted, the configuration map is part of the overall variables maps. Retrieving variables from maps are subject to a precedence list when a specific map is not referenced when attempting to retrieve it, like in the use of velocity replacements like the URL field we replaced in interface A and interface B. Going into interface C, we are already using the configuration map variable created for interface A and interface B. We have updated the print statement to reference the configuration map variable by name only, not specifying to retrieve it specifically from the configuration map. Moving over to interface C's script tab, we can see that we have named a global channel map variable the same as the one created in the configuration map. Since the global channel map is higher in the variable map precedence list than the configuration map, interface C will be referencing the global channel map variable instead of the configuration map. Sending a message to interface C will show the overridden value in the server log. An emphasis on this is that this is not updating the value of the configuration map, since that is not overridable outside of the configuration map settings tab, but reading from the global channel map variable instead due to the variable map precedence list. The precedence list can be referenced in the Mirth Connect user guide. I'll go ahead and add a link to the Mirth Connect user guide in the video description down below. Finally, we'll mock up a quick server migration demonstrating that a fresh set of imported interfaces and an imported configuration map backup file will have the interfaces acting as expected without any edits to the interfaces. We'll start off by undeploying the three interfaces to show that nothing is deployed in the dashboard. Next, we'll export the interfaces channel group by clicking Export Group and saving the export locally. Since we're using the same environment to act as a secondary Mirth Connect server, we will delete the interfaces that we just exported along with the channel group. Again, this step is not necessary if you were to be deploying to a separate Mirth Connect server. Let's go ahead and export the configuration map by clicking the Export Map button and saving the properties file locally. From here, we will go in reverse, re-importing the configuration map using the Import Map button seeing that the variable that we had previously created has reappeared in the table. We'll re-import the exported channel group using the import group button, and then go ahead and deploy the channel group. What you'll notice here is that no changes are being made to the channels as we make our way over to send test messages to the interfaces again. After clearing out the logs, we will send a test message to interface A and interface B, expecting the configuration map variable that was re-imported. Interface C will print out its overridden value that was set in its scripts. Well, that wraps it up for our quick tutorial on setting up configuration maps in Mirth Connect. By utilizing configuration maps, you will make your company's interface analyst lives better with a consolidated location to update global variables and we'll be able to provide your system administrators with a backup file with known variables needed for newly spun up Mirth Connect servers. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give us a thumbs up as it really helps us and would be greatly appreciated. You'll find some helpful links down in the description below, and if you need some additional information or if you have any questions or comments, you can email us anytime at info at if you want to learn more about Mirth Connect or want to get connected with our team of integration experts, be sure to check us out on the web at consultzen.com. Finally, I would love to hear about how you are utilizing configuration maps in your Mirth Connect environment, so please drop a comment on this video and let us know. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.